Hello, welcome to the Old Tattered Flag. In this video, we're going to show you the art of punch needle embroidery. As you can tell, there's a lot you can do with it. Punch needle embroidery is the art of creating a design with thousands of tiny loops of thread. I'm going to try to show you a close-up so you can see the detail. focus. You can see each loop which is created by punching into a backing foundation. Punch needle is a miniaturized version of a design. This is our antique floral design which I punched. I believe it's 8 by 10 inches. I'm going to raise the camera to show you this design is the same design as our hooked rug version hanging up on the wall. I'm going to pan over and show you the same design done in wool applique, which is just appliquing with wool, no greater thing. But if someone didn't want to do either the wool applique or the rug hooking, you can do the punch needle and it's done with regular embroidery floss. You can make little coasters such as I have done with these little miniature redware plates. You can back your pieces with wool like I've done. Put a little hook on them to hang them. You can put them on an antique piece antique wooden piece, which I've done here. You can put them on another wooden piece that you just cut out by hand and nail them on for a nice primitive look. Or you can put them on pre-made wooden pieces like I did with this piece right here that has a metal hanger on it. Again, you can also line them with wool, which I think gives them a nice frame. Punch needle patterns come hand drawn on what's called weaver's cloth. It's a, it's a tightly woven, it almost looks like um, muslin, but it's not. It's, it's much more tightly woven. You can punch into muslin or cotton or anything, but they have the tendency to rip as you're punching your, your tool into the fabric. The fabric can rip. These two items are punched into wool. I simply drew the design onto the wool and punched it. And remember that the design comes out reversed. I'll show you that in a minute. This is a punch needle purse. We have the pattern here at theoldtatterflag.com. Outside of the actual punching tool, the most important thing for punching is your frame. If you're just starting out, you can of course punch in a regular embroidery hoop. The thing about embroidery hoops is that they just don't hold the fabric tight enough. So I give you five minutes punching with it before you get discouraged. You can purchase um, a no-slip embroidery hoop. These are made by Morgan. These are a really nice embroidery hoop. hoop. This is a, a like a double one, which is real nice because you can use either the larger end or the smaller end. You can also take it apart so you just have the actual hoop. I was skeptical when I first got this because I thought I hadn't found an embroidery hoop that actually prevented the fabric from slipping, but these really do. They're a good product. The thing I use is my trusty old rug hooking frame. Um, the opening for the frame is larger as you can see. Most punch needle designs aren't this large. Mine tend to be on the larger side because I punch with six strands and I just prefer the larger designs. So I'm always able to fit it on my frame. If you were to get a pattern that did not fit on your frame, you could simply sew strips of scrap fabric onto it to fit it on your frame. The thing with punching is that you want your fabric as tight as possible on the frame. You want it to sound like a drum. It should be that tight. So, if you're just starting out punching, you're going to want a pu good punch needle. It's nice and tight like a drum, right? I'm going to tell that, Mom. 
I prefer the Ultra Punch Needle. It really is just a preference. I've heard of the Cameo. I've seen that out there. There's, there's several different punch needles. I prefer the Ultra because they give you three needle tips. One for large punching, which would be six strands. One medium for three strand punching. And a small, which would be for one strand of punching. I only use the six strand. Occasionally I use the three strand one for detailing. The thing with the Ultra Punch Needle is that you can set the height of your loops right here. All these notches represent the height of your loop. The higher the height, the higher the loop. Mom's trying not to laugh. If you were to put it on, say, 8, 10, 12, anything like that, you're going to have a very high loop. I punch on a 2. I just prefer a low pile. I think it shows the detailing better. A neat idea for the height on the loops is, say, if you went up to 10, say you were doing like a fluffy woolly sheep, you might want the loops to stand out more. Or if you were doing grass, you might want a taller loop for your grass. Of course, the next thing is you're going to want a really good pair of scissors. Mom showed you this plate of scissors because I just put it together and she thought it was cute. <laughs> but really, you want a good pair of scissors because you're doing small work and you're going, to be, um, you're going to be trimming your threads, so you want a really good sharp pair of scissors. Next, you can look over here. If you become involved in punch needle, this is what you'll end up with. This monstrosity of a mess that I have to clean every so often. This is my floss bucket that sits next to my chair. Soon at the old tattered flag, we will be offering our punch needle patterns with the, the floss. So you will have the option of just buying the pattern, and you can color plan it yourself, or we will put all the floss in it for you. With that said, sometimes I like to... Are you getting me in there, Mom? Sometimes I like to dye my thread. Dyeing you can do a number of ways. Tie your floss in a knot, throw as many of them as you want onto a sheet of foil or a screen or whatever. I dyed this with walnut crystals. Walnut crystals are, I don't even know what they are. Are they really walnut crystals? I, I don't know. I, no I should look into that. But um, it's a powdery substance. You mix it with water. Of course, the more crystals you use, the stronger your dye is going to be. I <laughs> had a little technical moment there. Um, when you have these laid out on your, and on your screen, spray them with your walnut crystals, flip them over, spray them again, let them dry. This gives you, this, with walnut crystals, gives you this mottled look background. Just a minute. She's letting the dog in. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> Is Ollie out? Yes. Ollie's out too, okay. As the videos progress, they get sillier and sillier. <laughs> this hand dyed with, with walnut crystals is going to give you this look for your background. I like it. The problem with dyeing is you don't want to dye too much. Because if you had dyed gold, dyed green, dyed off-white for your sheep, it would be too much dye. There would be, it would be jumbled. So if you're going to have a dyed background, have your subject shapes be a solid. That's just a little suggestion. If you don't want to dye your thread because it's just too intense, you know, too intensive for you, too, too labor intensive, but you like the old look, Baxter, you're not going out. This is the antique horse pattern that I just finished last night. I can't tell you how bright it was when I got done. I should have taken a picture, but it was very bright. Not at all something I would ever do. I simply laid this outside and sprayed the heck out of it with my walnut crystals. So I sprayed the whole piece. So it really brought it down. You can see it really brought the whole tone of it down. So this is another option. Now if you want, you can leave your pieces undyed. This one right here is undyed. This is my Santa 2012. You can see that's undyed. It's really just personal preference. 